Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back or welcome if this is your first time. Uh, one thing that you'll notice if you've used an older version is that now the location of the website is ftcsim.org. And You'll also notice if you look closely enough that there's been a lot of changes. And so that's why some of these things are being redone. If you don't have an account, you can go here to where I'm going to log out so you can see. You can go to log in and you can create an account. If you're a teacher or a coach, you may want to sign up for a teacher account. And there's a separate video that explains how to um, create a class or a team and assign them things that they can do and you can see what they're doing and um, also prevent any personal identifiable information from being shared on the internet. So I'm going to log in. So I come back here to the landing page, the FTC SAM landing page. And if you're not sure if you're in, uh, if you won't be, if you see a little lock here where my mouse is, you'll be locked out. You need to have a uh, an account to do that. So we're going to look at FTC movement. And the one we're going to look at today is this half moon one. We've looked at line, looked at rearward. We're going to look at half moon. When we get there, we're going to see there's something different. I'm going to close this video. And what you're going to notice is uh, there's already some code. And this code will take the robot from where it is. It'll go around the corner in this half moon shape. And it'll go on to this touchpad and cause the flag to raise. And just so you can see that, here we go. Because the point of this one today is not to create code to do that, but to take the code that we've created and learn about another one of our programming techniques that we have over here. So just to go through the code that's there, um, and you can see I've put some remarks in to explain it. The first thing I've done is as you would have seen in the previous episodes or previous tutorials is I've turned the direction of the left motor and I've made it go in reverse and that's explained in detail in previous ones but suffice it to say there are two motors on the back wheels and when I flip one over to uh, put it onto the left wheel uh, when I turn that on and give it power in this case 20 percent of its maximum power one of them is going to go forward and one of them is going to go backwards and i need that backwards one in this case the left motor to be reversed so these first two blocks are going to make the robot go forward for six tenths of a second then i want it to pivot so there's a couple of ways to turn we've seen where if we turn the motor on to uh say the same value and i haven't reversed it the robot will just spin. One motor is going forward, one motor is going backwards, and it causes the wheels to cause the robot to spin. Now that's not going to happen with, in this case because I've reversed one, but I'm choosing to do a different spin, a turn. I'm going to do a pivot like you would do in basketball, where the motor on the right-hand side, and I'll reset it so I can point to it, the motor on this side, once it gets to this point, is not going to turn. It's getting zero power because I want to turn it to the right, I'm going to have the left motor keep going. And those are the ones that are going to spin and it's going to turn the robot to the right. And I'm going to do that for a second. And you can fiddle with these numbers and try different things. What would it do if it's 0.3? What would I need here for milliseconds? In any case, then I'm going to go forward again with these two commands. And then I'm going to turn right again. And then I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to stop the motors. And that's what happens. So when we run it, we see that's what's going to happen. But today's lesson is not so much about that. Today's lesson is how to use one of these other things that's here. And one of the other things that's there is I'm going to create a, under miscellaneous, a robot function. And what I do is I drag one in. There it is. And I'm going to do this one so that I can turn right. So I'm going to type in turn and then capital R right because I want to use, uh, what we call camel code, which is just when you have multiple words in a name of a function in this case, that the two words um, are easier to read if every new word starts with a capital. And it sort of looks like the humps and camels. So that's what we call it. 
So I'm going to take this one, this command, I'm going to just duplicate it and I'm going to drag it in. And the second one, which I need in order to turn, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to grab it in and it's going to be really small. I just want to point this out. And then since I don't need this anymore, I'm going to just uh, uh, delete that and delete this. But now I need to have something in there that's going to make a turn. So I'm going to go over here to where I went to get the robot function. And I'm going to see now there's a new one that's created called turn right. So I'm going to put it in here. And when we test it, just to see, you can see it turns. It does the same thing as it did before, but I'm, I've called it something. I've created this function and then I'm using the function, but it's also used down here. So I'm going to dis, dis, delete this one. I could disable it, but I'm going to delete it and this one. And I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put that same function in again. So I'll put it in again, turn right. And there we go. And again, I can test it and it's going to do the same thing because those are the commands that it does. Okay, there we go. But you can see that there's two other commands that are doing the same thing and that's where it's going to go straight. So I could do the exact same thing. I could create another one. I'm going to call this one uh, straight. And we don't start with a capital and in my case I don't. Uh, although uh, it would be nice to actually spell it correctly. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to spell it correctly. If I could actually hit it, I'm not sure. There we go. And so I'll do the same thing. I'll duplicate this one, drop it in, duplicate this one, drop it in. And then I'm going to get rid of these ones. This, this is the same one right here, right? So there, delete those blocks delete those blocks and so on. And then there's one more where it's going straight, delete that and delete that and then go here. And I've got another one now called straight. So I'm going to make it go forward and I'm going to, I can duplicate it at this point. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to put it in forward and then one more duplicate it and I'll put it in right there and hopefully I've got them on the right order, so I'll reset and give it a try. And of course it works. Now you could have much more complicated functions, but one of the things about coding and functions is they're actually a lot more useful if they're small functions. You say, well, if there's only two commands in there, what's the purpose? Well, that is the purpose is to keep them short. They seems counterintuitive, but they're more useful if they're shorter ones. One of the things that we could also do is we could actually return a value. So you'll see there's a function here that says return and that's where it's going to do something and then it's going to spit out a value. Maybe you're trying to do some kind of complicated calculation that takes a whole bunch of steps and you want to return a value that you're going to use in a speed or something like that. The other thing you can do is you can actually have input. So in this particular case, I don't have any inputs, but I could have a variable here instead of 0 0.02, 0 0.2. I could have a variable that I would created to plug in there because maybe I want it to be, I could have two variables in here and one, if I give it a value, it's going to make a turn to the right. And one, if I give it a value, it's going to make it turn to the left. Or I could have a variable that goes in here. I could say how long I want it to turn for. So you can also do that. So it's very useful technique to learn to use functions. They can be definitely reused as you go forward um, and you can make great use out of using these function names, function calls inside of your program, because as you're going to notice when you do some of these, they tend to get really, really long and it's better if they're off to the side with the information and then you're just putting in one or two terms along the way. It just makes it work a little bit smoother. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about these functions and hopefully you'll find a way to employ them in your um, FTC SIM code. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org and I hope you're going to have great fun with the FTC simulator and if you write some great programs 
uh, please feel free to contact me. I would love to see what you've done. So thanks, and we'll talk to you later.